When should you draft a quarterback in fantasy football? Should you pick up Patrick Mahomes in the second round? Or wait until waivers to pick up Ryan Fitzpatrick? In this video, we discuss the ideal strategy for how you can pick up a quarterback to help you win a fantasy football championship. Welcome back, everybody. This is Fantasy Football 201, an advice show on my channel to help you win a fantasy football championship. I picked 201 because 101 was already taken by somebody else. But in this video, I give you advice from a peer of how to be successful in fantasy football. Um, doing this because I want to see you guys be successful. I'm trying to share some of the tips that have worked well for me in the past. Today's video, we are going to be talking about quarterback strategy. So if you're interested in content like this, please check out my channel. I make a wide variety of videos. I just made a video about kicker strategy yesterday, so if you want to check that out, um, it's in the description below. But I also make a wide variety of other content too. Uh, song covers, song reactions, etc. So check that out in the description below. So we will get to quarterback strategy. So quarterbacks is one of the most, uh, I guess, polarizing in terms of fantasy football, in terms of when you should take a quarterback, um, you, you know, how high you should take them, should you stream, should you um, go with different guys. So the biggest problem that I see in terms of some of the bad strategies I've seen with quarterbacks is that people get confused with fantasy football and real football. Because in real football, everything revolves around the quarterback in terms of if the team is successful, are they, you know, a franchise quarterback, etc. So they're the names that are talked about the most. So because of that, it's going to drive up some name brand hype value that takes a lot of these players into ranges that they should not be typically drafted. So you look at, a, 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 in this video here, I have a picture displayed of the average draft position from last year. As you can see, a lot of players that have big names went relatively high in the draft compared to where they most realistically perform. So, and this is because a lot of people that are just casual fans, they just pick guys like Tom Brady, um, Patrick Mahomes, things like that before they really try to build the whole roster. And it's, it's not very effective. And I'm going to go through why with some stats and uh, reasonings here in a sec. The other issue is that fantasy football quarterbacks put up the most points compared to every other player just based on the scoring system. And I'm talking about the scoring system on ESPN, not as much about um, some of the other formats and custom formats you may have out there. But generally, quarterbacks are going to be putting up a lot of points. So people will want to go with the guys that put up the most points for the season, but they don't necessarily look at the point spread across the rest of the position. There's reasons why running backs and receivers should be taken over quarterbacks is because some running backs and receivers put up significantly more points than quarterbacks do. Um, the other thing, too, is that when you take these quarterbacks high, you're losing out on some of those elite level running backs and wide receivers that could be very helpful to you. You think about it, you're filling one position on your team to start a quarterback week to week, but you have a potential for three running backs or three wide receivers to play in a given week. So it's very important that you build the depth for running backs and receivers. And if you go reaching for guys like Patrick Mahomes in the second round, then you cost yourself some potentially elite players that should be very helpful to you to help you build that wide receiver running back depth. And it ultimately can hurt you in the long run, especially if they don't have breakout seasons where they just go off for points or they get injured from time to time, etc. So what were the quarterback stats like over the past three years? So I took a look at those stats to kind of compare some statistics similar to what we did with the kicker video. So it's a little bit different than the kicker strategy because when I talked about kickers, um, the standard deviation is not very much at all between kickers, so it justifies taking them last. And some people feel this way to a degree about quarterbacks, so they are very strictly in the camp of streamers. But there is some danger to that, so I'm going to talk about this in a sec. So you look at the overall standard deviation between the number 1 to the number 20 players, similar to what we did in the kicker video. For 
2020, the number one quarterback had 469 points. The number 20 quarterback had 258 points. So still a lot of points, but definitely not the level of number one. 2019, the number one quarterback, 474 points. The number 20 quarterback, 265 points. And then in 2018, the number one quarterback had 507 points. That was Patrick Mahomes' uh, first year where he went off. And then the number 20 quarterback had 240 points. So if you take a look at the standard deviation of that, there is quite a difference between the elite quarterbacks and or the number one quarterback and the number 20 quarterback. But much with the quarterbacks, there's more of an outlier factor that kind of throws off the standard deviation. So what I did here is if we take out all the quarterbacks for each year that had over 400 points. So you then go from there. Um, so there were seven quarterbacks in 2020 that went over um, 400 points. There were one quarterback, Lamar Jackson, in 2019 that went over 400 points. And then there were um, three quarterbacks in 2018 that went over 400 points. So if you take all that out, the standard deviation between quarterbacks is generally, or the, the difference between the quarterbacks the rest of the way is relatively about 395 to about 250, give or take. So that is a lot more reasonable in terms of skewing these numbers is that there's generally a few players that go over the 400 mark. It's generally about three, four players per year. Last year was a bit of an outlier, I think, because COVID, um, they not playing in front of fans probably inflated some numbers a little bit. So the overall takeaway that I have in terms of looking at these numbers is that you can still get some good value with stream quarterbacks later on, um, but you don't want to rely on it to a fault because there are some outliers that could be very beneficial for you to have. The trick is that you don't want to try to reach for them. So I will go into this. Generally, my strategy of what I try to do in terms of getting quarterbacks on my team is I try to look for guys that could be potential outliers that could be beneficial for me to have, but I also be very careful not to reach for them. And the reason being is because I don't want to cost myself some of that uh, elite running back wide receiver um, depth that could really be beneficial to me. Um, so when should you take a quarterback then? For me personally, the earliest that I consider taking a quarterback, and there are some very few exceptions to this, is the fourth round. Um, there are times that if I've got an elite wide receiver or an elite um, like tight end or some kind of pass catcher to that quarterback, I want to get the stack. So an example of this is uh, with the Houston Texans, my go-to was always pairing Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins together because Deshaun Watson, running quarterback, I'm going to get into that in a sec, but he always was very consistent with his points because of that. And DeAndre Hopkins stood out as pretty much the focal point of that offense. They didn't really have a ton of consistency pass catching other than him. So it just turned into points after points after points every week because that was the whole Texans offense was Deshaun Watson to DeAndre Hopkins pretty much. Obviously, that's not the case anymore, but, or at least the specific uh, tandem there. Thanks, Bill O'Brien. But uh, that's the kind of thing that I would consider taking a quarterback in the fourth round for. But in general, I do not look to take a quarterback until the fifth round because I want to make sure I get at least four wide receivers or running backs that will be helpful to me to build that depth first. And then I start trying to look for quarterbacks as we start getting closer to the middle. Um, and again, I talk about the, I already talked about this a little bit, but you're only playing one quarterback per week, but you could be between running backs and wide receivers. You have a total of five positions, two wide receivers, two running backs and a flex, which is generally going to be either a wide receiver or a uh, running back, even though you can't fill it with a tight end, but you're playing three of, of the running back and wide receiver positions over the quarterback position, who just only has one slot per week. So it's very important to prioritize running backs and wide receivers over quarterbacks. So that's generally what I do. So now I'm going to get into 
the the tiers, I guess, of how I rate these quarterbacks because there's it, it, a lot of this changes as the draft is going on. You you have to judge when people are taking quarterbacks. Some people are going to be reaching for them really high. Some leagues are going to be a little more conservative and take quarterbacks later on relative to where they're falling on the draft boards. But this is in general what how I would rank them. So the first tier, um, and, and this is usually out of my price range, is Patrick Mahomes. He is pretty much going to go no later than the fourth round. So he's people are going to be reaching for him probably second to third round. And although that's not a bad pick, I personally don't do that because it's, it's going to cost yourself some running back or wide receiver depth potentially. And Patrick Mahomes has to stay healthy and he has to be just a machine in order for that to work. And he hasn't, even though he had that amazing 2018, he's been relatively um, around the level of some of these other elite quarterbacks that you get later. So I personally do not do that. The only reason I would consider taking Patrick Mahomes is if I draft Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey with my number one overall pick, and I really feel strongly about trying to get the stack with uh, Patrick Mahomes. But I don't think I would do that in the third round. I'd maybe wait until he falls to the fourth round in order to attempt doing that. The other, the next tier that I want to talk about is this is the tier that I try to target if I can. Um, the running quarterbacks that give you consistent floor value. So guys like Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, uh, Deshaun Watson. He's probably not going to play this year, so you can kind of nix that for 2021. But in general, that's how I kind of viewed him in the past. Josh Allen. Russell Wilson, guys like that. Those are guys that you know are going to give you a consistent running floor. Um, I'll talk about this briefly. So basically, and, and if you, you can go back to my previous videos about uh, Baltimore Ravens, Arizona Cardinals, etc., where I talk about why it's important to take those two quarterbacks. And it's because running quarterbacks give you a floor that you cannot get with a mobile quarterback in terms of points production. So let's say that, let's compare two Complete opposite examples. So Lamar Jackson and Tom Brady. Let's say that, uh, let's say they both have games in which they throw for only uh, 150 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. So that's pretty much a dud week for those two players in terms of passing. But Lamar Jackson is more likely by far to have in that game rushed for 50 plus yards maybe gotten a touchdown as well. So you give yourself a floor with Lamar Jackson of 5 to 10 points at a minimum just with him running the ball. But guys like Tom Brady, the only time he's ever going to run the ball is if he's on the one-yard line and he's rushing for touchdowns. You look at his stats last year, he had six yards the whole season and three touchdowns. So pretty much exactly that same scenario. So it, And that is why I prioritize running quarterbacks is because they're going to give you a floor even if they have a bad game that guys like Tom Brady, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, although he's not going to be taken very high this year, guys like that are not going to be able to provide for you. So those are guys that I especially like in those positions. Um, the next tier that I want to talk about, and these are probably, and I'm going in terms of priority in terms of how I would take them in terms of Patrick Mahomes kind of, He's on his own world, but now going from here after these running quarterbacks, this is what I try to do next. So the next group that I try to target is young quarterbacks that I think have potential to grow, that ideally have some mobility as well, but also are going to um, have opportunity simply because they're going to need to throw the ball. Maybe they're down a lot. Maybe uh, you know their, their offensive coordinator is trying to get them more involved. Guys like that. So players in this category include Justin Herbert, um, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Tua Tagvaloa. Depending on what your opinion of him is, he could potentially fall into this category too. Um, so these are players that I would try to look to next because they're probably going to go a little later than uh, some of these running quarterbacks that I named earlier. So you can give yourself some time to build depth in case you can't reach for those, in case you can't uh, get those players on your team. And then you can take one of these guys if, uh, and you have some decent potential to go with if you're deciding to take the strategy of sitting back and waiting. Um, the next group that I try to look at um, is, if, if I can't get those guys, I try to fade down to some of these other quarterbacks that I think have low value in the their average draft position, but could give you some good value potentially. 
And if it doesn't work out, then you can go the streaming route. Um, Jalen Hurts, uh, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, and then to some degree, if you're in a really deep league, Ben Roethlisberger. These are guys that I, I highlight Hurts specifically in his own category that's kind of in a sub-tier because Hurts, I think, is going to have a very uh, difficult offense to work with, for lack of better words. But he does give you a lot of rushing potential, and he has shown flashes of being uh, very good. So if you need to wait until very end of drafts because a lot of these other teams that you're playing with have reached for quarterbacks, Hurts is not a bad option to take because he does give you that mobility, but his offense limits his upside to a degree. Other guys that you can get pretty late in drafts that would be beneficial, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, Ryan Tannehill, who's actually surprisingly mobile as well, ran for eight touchdowns last year. Um, Matt Ryan, who he's going to have to throw a lot. Their running back core is a little weak this year. Um, Kirk Cousins, guys like that. They're not bad options for you to have as late quarterbacks that you can take the streaming route with, but they're probably not the ideal solution either. The next tier I go into after that are guys that I generally would try to avoid, but there are situations that I would take them. And the, the only reason that I would try to avoid these players is because their hype is driving up their value more than they actually are going to perform, in my opinion. So Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Dak Prescott, and Matt Stafford. Those are four players that I think will probably be overdrafted this year relative to their performance. And you might be saying, well, well Aaron Rodgers was number one quarterback last year. But he also just... He just showed up to training camp like a week ago. So how is he going to do having uh, a year in which he's mostly not been a part of the team? Uh, there's a lot of questions in terms of that. So how he's going to turn out. Tom Brady, same thing. I mean, this team is going to rely on multiple ways to win. And a lot of times it's not going to involve Tom Brady necessarily putting up a lot of stats. You just look at the... Uh, um, the game against Green Bay in the NFC Championship. He threw for three interceptions that game. So he's he's he does what he needs to to win. May not be pretty all the time, so I generally try to avoid him for that reason. And then the last category is pretty much guys that I just don't consider at all um, that probably could be drafted from time to time, and those are Cam Newton and Baker Mayfield. Um, and then I, Daniel Jones, I guess, falls in this category too. So Cam Newton I avoid because... Um, yes, he does give you rushing value, but he, he doesn't even really give you a floor that's justifiable to start. He's like that extreme example I gave with Lamar Jackson earlier. That's like Cam Newton every game last year for the, the, for the second half of the season. So I just generally try to avoid that. It's just better to go with somebody who you can stream. Uh, and then Baker Mayfield, he's going to have good games from time to time, but this is going to be a team that focuses on rushing the ball with uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Baker Mayfield, I think, is somebody that is, again, his hype is going to drive him higher than I think is really worth taking him at all. And Daniel Jones, he has potential, but until he really proves that he can stay um, free of turnovers and doesn't just throw interceptions and fumble nonstop, I'm generally not looking his direction. But he does have interesting upside because he is surprisingly mobile as well. Um, so that is how I rank these quarterbacks and how I would approach them going into this 2021 fantasy football season. If you're interested in more videos like this, please let me know and consider like, commenting, or subscribing if you want some more fantasy football advice. I'm here to help. I only have 96 subscribers right now, so if you comment, I will probably answer. Stay tuned for this weekend. I'm going to do a fantasy football mock draft. I'm doing that every week as well to help you prepare for this season. All right. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.